Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to Hebrew Congregation of Houston, episode 91. It's good to be in the house. It's good to see you all. You all looking mighty handsome today. <laughs> and you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we know Passover will be this week. So April the 15th to the 23rd, that's our festival. That's our holiday. That's our feast day. We have got to celebrate our feast days. Passover is very important because what? That represents when um, Moses led us out of Egypt, right? So we want to uh, go ahead and celebrate the Passover. I'm going to do a little bit on Easter, keeping it real. And then we're going to really get into this Passover. I know we got the uh, pagan holiday Easter in the middle of the 17th. Um, I'm not going to get in anybody's business telling them what to do and what not to do, but we have got to get back to the tour. We have got to get back to our feast days. And I must stress that. And that's why we come on here every Saturday. So log on every Saturday. If you don't know what to do, get you a pen and a paper. We're going to give you some instructions today. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I just wanted, uh, the Lord put on my heart about friends and assignments this week. And so a friend is what I like to give definitions, a person uh, who you've known with uh, a bond or a mutual affection. Typically, uh, there's no sexual uh, or family uh, relations involved. So that's the definition. Assignment is a task or a piece of work assigned to someone as a part of a job or a course of study. I wanted to get into that because we have to know the difference. So God gives us assignments and then we have friends. So as a friend, what? You share things with one another, but as an assignment, you have to be careful with that person, right? You have to be careful with when God assigns you because a friendship is mutual. You're giving energy, you're taking energy back, you're praying for one another. An assignment is someone that's taking your anointing, okay? Somebody has an open mic. So an assignment, you're pushing out your anointing. You're instructing them. And so they're watching you. They're judgmental. So you have to be careful with that. Um, a friendship, uh, they share, you share personal information with them about yourself. But an assignment, you can't tell them everything about yourself, right? Because what you can't lead your brother, your brother or sister to stumble or fall. It says that biblically. And so in Proverbs 18, I'm going to give you a scripture real quick. Proverbs 18 and 24 says, a man of many campaigns may come to ruin, but there's a friend who sits closer than a brother. Some of our friends are closer, what, than our brothers or sisters. It, it, that's just how it is. It is what it is. And then I'm just going to sum it up. Okay, so a friend gives you fresh fuel, fuel. They love on you. They pray for you. You might uh, have some little controversy, but they're always going to be there. They love you. It's genuine. It's a gothy type of love with the friendship. But an assignment is seasons. There's seasons. And I had to get this because sometimes I would say somebody's my friend, but really they were an assignment and then they would leave me. And I'm like, like, what did I do? Like, what happened? I, I, I gave all I can give. I did all I was supposed to do. I prayed for them because they were an assignment. I was supposed to give what I was supposed to give for that season, love on them, show them Christ in me, show them the Yahweh and leave it alone. So don't take it personal. Because an assignment, you can't take that personal. And this is, I'm speaking to someone right now, okay? And I had to learn that. So learn your difference between an assignment and a friend. And I want you to have that marinate in your spirit, okay? Anybody want to say anything real quick uh, before we go into the uh, topic of the Passover about the topic I just spoke of? Yeah, that, 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 was, that was good right there because uh, a lot of times when we get these assignments, sometimes when we don't know the difference, we become too attached. Mm -hmm. And then when they leave us, then we're kind of like devastated, not realizing the difference. And so that eventually, you know, I've experienced that on several occasions, even, you know, after I began my walk and stuff like that, I'd go to a certain job and I'd become close to someone, you know, and then there was this departure that happened, like especially when there was layoffs and stuff like that, you know, and they were no longer there in my life. And the, the whole thing with the job, right being disband disbanded was hard enough but then you know you're losing this person like no. and then there's, there's just no connection but then I began to slowly and it wasn't until I worked at this one job where this girl she actually told me and she said I know why you're here 
she said, you, you here for me. She said, mm. because this is something I pray for. You know, you're on assignment. Mm. I had never, and, and it, until that day, that never ran across my mind. Mm -hmm. And then I started like taking note of that. And I was like, you, I'm like, okay, you know what? That was for me what she told me right there. And right. a lot of times when you come across these people, they have something that they have to share mm. with you whether they know it or not. And then you have something that you have to share with them and, and depart into them. Right. As, assignment, and I want to stress that, it's seasonal. It's seasonal. You know, they're soul ties. They may call you months or years later because right. we know about those ties, whether they're female or male, but it's seasonal. So don't take it person. Just do what God instructed you to do. Right. Don't, we, don't be worried about, well, I gave them this, Lord, and I did that. Why are they gone? Leave it where it's at. Yeah, and we got to. We own we to, none of these people. They are on loan to us. Right. We're on loan to them. Right. Our anointing is to we, shine on them. And then don't get bad and try to hear some uh, minister grip and like cuss them out or call them and ask them why and get some explanation. Now you're out the box. Now you're doing what you're not <laughs> supposed to do. Just give it to God. Do what you're supposed to do. Stay in your lane and let him do the work. And just let him give you your rewards. It doesn't come from man, no way. It comes from our Yahweh, the Lord, the Christ up above. And so like to. I said, if you're listening to this, it's a, it's a reason. When people want to walk out, let them go. Do your assignment, kick the dust off your feet, keep it moving. And if they come in your mind and spirit, you pray for them. We need to understand also that people come into our lives for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And we have to make that determination which one of those three that that person is in your life for. Right. Well, thank you all for your input. I pray that you've gotten something out of that because I know I've struggled with that at times. I've struggled with it, but I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm good now. Okay. So let's, let's talk about the Passover. So we talked about the, the Seder plate, which is Passover, which is what, like I just said, our religious holiday, our festival to celebrate that God used Moses to bring the Israelites, which is us, out of slavery. We are the Hebrew Israelites. We are the original Jews. We are from Shem, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? So you're going to have, let's talk about the food. I'm only going to do a little piece of it, and I'm going to hand it over to the rabbi. So let's talk about that, the food that you have. So you're going to need four glasses of wine. And the four glasses of wine represent what? The four promises of redemption. What are the four promise of, promises of redemption, Easter? One, I will bring you out. He going to bring us out from under the burdens in the United States, too, because we're in Egypt right now. So he's going to bring us out. God doesn't change, too. He's going to deliver us. Don't worry about it. There's going to be someone like Moses that brings us out of the United States that takes us back home. Like I said, I don't know if I'll be around to see it, but it's going to happen. The third one, he's our redeemer. He will redeem us. So we're going to get our reparations. Remember when they left Egypt? They was like, I need your gold. I need this and that. And they were more than glad to give it to him because God had favor on them and they had feared the Lord because they saw what his works, what he was doing in favor of us Israelites, right? And then what? The fourth one, and I will take you to me for my people they will know who we are we know who we are but the world would know who we are they already do they're waiting on us right now they know who we are matter of fact i talked to a jewish guy yesterday and i, I told him i was a hebrew israelite a messianic jew he, he's like prove it i told him a couple of things and he never responded Start telling them what we're saying to you. They won't respond. When you talk about that Assyrian and that Babylonian war, they know who we are. They know what's going on. We're the only one that's waking up that didn't know. Jesus. Are y'all sure? Okay, so the foods. Let's get back to the foods. So the food is what? You can have the lamb, the shank of lamb, or you can do your chicken, uh, a boiled egg, some herbs, uh, some um, no laving in your bread. You want to go ahead and put all your bread and anything that rises with flour. Don't eat it that week. You're going to fast from bread. I needed that anyway, because you know, I need to lose a couple pounds, but any, anywho. <laughs> <laughs> and so no, nothing that rises, no pastries, no breads. So just put them away somewhere. Uh, anything with flour in it, you don't want it because it rises. Some salt water, 
You got your wine. We didn't say drink the whole bottle. Just get your, your four glasses. Uh, uh, well, actually, it, it can it can have flour, but it can't have yeast. Okay. Thank you, you Minister Mike. Yes. I'm just gonna stay away from all together because if I get a little bit of that, I I, I want it. So yeah, I, I'm stick staying to away from it. <laughs> stick to your matzo. <laughs> and so I did post a video from last year of how to make your unleavened bread. So I'm gonna make mine and then keep your matzo crackers present in case you mess it up. You can have your your matzo crackers too, okay? And then you have your horseradish, your apples, and your dried fruits. And so what I usually do the first day and the last day is when you really, you know, want to get into it, the 15th and the 23rd, is I put a blanket on the floor and I spread the food out. And it's fun if you have children or you just with your, your spouse and family and you eat and you have that meal together. OK, and then I have my little candles and my wine. And I mean, it's just it's great. It's wonderful. And it's celebrating our feast days. It's, it's letting the Lord know that we, we worship him our Yahweh, and we thank him for what he's done for us and what he's about to do. Okay, so that's that's pretty much all I have to say. Anybody else want to add anything before Rabbi takes it over? And, and, and as you were saying, when we, uh, well, we will refrain from eating stuff with leaven in it, stuff that rise, that's actually when you begin the what is called the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and we'll do that like for a week. And Minister Mike, move your head over a little bit. See his background? Right there, that's the, the, the Seder plate right there. That's a representation. And you see the apples he has right there? What is that called again? There's a name for that. That's called charoset. It has like yeah. apples, nuts, like wal walnuts in it, and then a little bit of wine. If you don't want to use wine, you can always substitute wine for grape juice. I've, had I've made it, it a few times. It's it's pretty easy to make. Yeah. And, yeah. They have, yeah. they, and, and, and it's good too. The service where yeah. they have like the Hillel sandwich where you mix the horseradish and the haroset and the uh, masa together. <laughs> yes, now horseradish I don't do because I don't do condiments. So I was telling everyone, you get the pesto is what you dip in your bread at the Italian restaurants. You can buy it in the store. It's a little jar for like $10. So that's what mm -hmm. I use as my herbs. So there's just different things you can substitute too, okay? But uh, you don't have to get into, like I said, we over here in this, uh, in this Egypt called the United States. So the most thing is about recognizing it and saying your prayers, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else anybody want to add before we hand it over to the rabbi? Yeah, I just got that plate, actually. I just got my, finally got my plate. Like, I had been doing it without one for the longest and using, like, I think I was using one from, like, the dollar um, tree and stuff that I had found that had, like, the circle compartments, and I would just use that. So I finally just got one this time. So and, and you don't yeah. even need everything to do right. it. Even if you don't have a Seder plate, as yeah. long as you have those items to yes. arrange on your plate so you can participate in the whole uh, Seder, uh, Passover uh, Seder, and then, of course, you're going to have your meal, and that's, like... I don't have I don't have a Seder plate, so I have to up my game. And get me a Seder plate. I have my communion set up, and right. I have my, right. my, my horn right. and all that, and my candles. And but um, and this just gives you an example because a lot of the a lot of the I don't think I've ever been to a Seder that had mm -hmm. this particular um, plate. Mm -hmm. It wasn't labeled like that. They yeah. just had all of the items arranged on your plate, so you already yeah, have that's. That's kind of how I did it. But this just helps. This yeah. is like a, a more of a teaching tool than a learning tool. You yeah, know? your whole table, your your whole table could be your your plate, right? Right. right. Just, you know. So, and and when I uh, a coach Easter said we do it on the floor, right? We mm -hmm. set out the the and we have the pillows. We climb to the left, and our mm -hmm. floor where we are, it mm -hmm. is our plate. Now we don't have we don't do the egg, you know. Any each community is a little bit different. Uh -huh. so I don't use the egg, you know, and, and something, some, and, you know, but I do do the wine, the drinking, the four cups. Um, uh -huh. But every community, see, you have to remember each community. It's different. Uh, yeah, it's different. Yeah. So in each household, you may be a little different. Some may use the entire plate, some don't. But uh, don't be dogmatic about it and telling people they're wrong. Because really, if you're keeping the, the feast, you're right. Mm -hmm. you're doing right. it because right. when you look at Beta Israel, your heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you look at yeah. Beta Israel, you look at the Sephardic community and the Ashkenazi community, the Yemeni community, uh, and and you'll see something different every one of them, and you'll yeah. you will uh, be attracted to 
right? What appeals to you and you may start mm -hmm. to do that because, because you want to involve your whole family from the youngest child mm -hmm. to, the, to the elders, right? And you want a, a, you want something there for everyone. It's to, mm -hmm. to draw people. We want to draw people back to the family, right? This right. is the part of the prophecy mm -hmm. of Eliyahu Hanavi when he comes to reconcile things. We can use this Passover, these Passover seasons as a part of that in reconciling the family. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a story. We teach the story about deliverance, right? Mm -hmm. and, and which is what it is about. It's about delivering, being delivered as a people out of your personal Egypt. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And so each story has a uniqueness. <clears throat> Each community and each family has a, a uniqueness. Think about when, when um, I'm getting started here. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. I'm on a roll. We, you're right. We talk about that <laughs> Stockholm syndrome. You got to release your mind from this. Yeah. Uh, literally yeah. detach from these, these pagan holidays and Easter and this foolishness of buying clothes and being a show and don't even teach your kids. It, that's your fruit, your children. Well, go ahead, Rabbi. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. We have to teach that. And, and so in our now. I have gravitated toward, uh, of course, I'm, my rabbinic, uh, Shemika comes through Beta Israel, right? Mm -hmm. and, and through Rabbi Matthew Wentworth, you know, back in 1923, his, you know, and they come from Ethiopia and, and Rabbi Ford and all of this. So that's where my Shemika comes through. So we have our own um, Seder, right? That we have, it's unique to our, to our community as an African community. Uh, or Ethiopian community. And in it, we give the story of the transatlantic slave trade because that is something that is unique to us mm -hmm. as a people in whole. If mm -hmm. you came through, if some member or some part of your family came through the transatlantic mm -hmm. slave trade, this, this should be a part of your story. That's right. right. You know, how we were delivered up to the day that we are where we are today. Because remember, we were chattel. Our forefathers were not even human beings. Mm -hmm. And so you can look at that and draw from that and say that now we've had a president that looks like us. We have mm -hmm. Supreme Court justices that look like us. So the father is delivering us, not just delivered, but delivering us. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we are part of the redemption. It's going on right now. The reconciliation, it's the, continually and I just gave on. it to you. The four, he had, the Lord has not changed. So mm -hmm. those, those four glasses of wine about our redemption, his promises. Mm -hmm. Those are, our, you have to know the promise. You have to stand on, you have to speak. Hey, yeah. Lord, you promised this. And yeah. the only way mm -hmm. is what? By studying his word. Right. When by knowing, start, and we're giving you his word. And we start understanding it gives you, even when you when you see these things and they become a part of your 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 mindset. Even when you read in the book of Exodus, okay, it talks about you know when will the time of redemption come. He says nobody knows the times, plural or the seasons. In Matthew, so that again ties to us today because there have been times of deliverance and seasons when we're we're seeing deliverances. You know, we went from chattel slavery, then we had the, you know, the industrial revolution, and then we went back into in the, the slave code, then we came out of it, then we had 1964, 65, where it came up with these uh, from action, all these kind of things came up. So these were times of deliverance, even all the way up until, again, until today. And there are elements that are going to fight against us Ooh. until we get out. That's the story of deliverance, because remember, in the land of Egypt, our forefathers, the Pharaoh, the kings, the leaders, the people who were in power against us, fought us up to the last minute till Moshe Rabbeinu came and we actually went through the parting of the sea or parting or the separation of ways. That sea represents a separation of our ways, separating us from our bondage into our new life as a nation. See, so this story that we, we sit down, this telling that we go through every year at the first of the, uh, as it says in the book of Abib or Nisan, it changes to Nisan, but of Abib of the buddings, we began to remember this is a fresh start for us, 
right? It's the head of our, our what we call, we start going into our holy season, our deliverance season, and our redempt, sign of redemption. All of that begins right now. Mm-hmm. It's a fresh start for us as a people. And it starts in our homes, right? We start mm-hmm. recognizing this week right here, this week we're coming into next week as we go into, we start again, remembering that in our lives, we've had sin, right? And so mm-hmm. we want to start recognizing and setting that sin outside. That's what that, when we talk about that, getting that yeast out, you know, we like to talk about that, getting it out, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. I, you know, my granddaughter sold me some, some Girl Scout cookies the last week. <laughs> Bought six bucks of them things. Wow. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I've been there. And you know what's in them cookies? Yeast. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, got full of, you know, I got all these cookies, the box of cookies. I got, oh my goodness. I didn't even think about it till I got to get rid of all these cookies. I got, I look at all this stuff I got to get rid of, right? Mm-hmm. You know? But, and, and why do I do it? What is the foolishness of it? The foolishness of it that, you know, it, it's, it's necessary, right? For the world is foolishness, but for us, we understand the significance of this. So what mm-hmm. I'll do is I, oh, I'll set this stuff aside, you know, and we want to gear this for people that are just coming into the knowledge, just coming into the understanding. We do not want to overwhelm you. And if you want to mm-hmm. find the story, go back. The very simplest of the story is you go back to Exodus, right? Mm-hmm. The coming out of it, the coming out. Mm-hmm. Go to Exodus chapter 13, mm-hmm. right? And you read that. That is the most simplest way of doing and keeping the Passover. Now, if you want to get a little bit deeper, you go to, to Leviticus chapter 23, I guess, chapter 23, uh, I believe it is. And you and you start getting deep because you, now you're talking about, you know, you're talking about, actually, in all of you talk about the redemption of the firstborn, which we have one of those with Zion, the Zion, right? Firstborn, right. son, right? That's redemption. Zion. That's a part of the story. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a part of the story, you see? <laughs> And, and so then we, we, then we talk about counting the omer, right? Now, what is this, you know, what we're doing is we're counting up to the day of what? Shavuot or the day of Pentecost. For you that are just coming in, the day of Pentecost. So when we have Passover, you know, so Easter doesn't tell you that. The book of Easter doesn't tell you that when they, well, there ain't no book of Easter. <laughs> when the, the people talk about the, the, this time of Easter that's coming, they don't tell you about, you know, they, they don't even, I don't, do, they ever, do they even mention Pentecost? Uh-uh. No. The significance of the Pentecost? Well, see, so so what we'll do is, again, and we have a, a calendar. It's from the Board of Israel, the Israelite Board of, Is- of, of, of Rabbis, and we have our annual calendar. So if you follow, let me, may I share my screen? Yes, yes. If the Lord bless, if the Lord be with me, I can show you this. But but we have a calendar, and see, all of this is for the unity of us as a community right? And, and all of it. And, and we try to, to do things that will unify us and not separate us. So, and w- with, without giving up our own individual autonomy or community autonomy, so you can see my calendar, right? And you see right here, you see all this yellow? Yes. That's Passover, right? So on Friday, which is 14, look how close it is, Nissan 14. And, and on the Roman calendar, it's the 15th. So, so it's pretty close this time, right? So on Friday, this Friday night, we're going to have what? Passover meal, right? Yes, right? yes. Because it says on the 14th, when you read those chapters. At, at, sun, at sunset, which is usually about 6.30. Right, okay. So we're going to have that meal, that family meal. Some in, in Many times we have two meals, right? Because we have our own personal meal. And then we have one with the community, right? And that's, again, that's recognizing, right? And we want to share with other people. Many of us don't, many of us just have the one, but the important thing is on that day, we're going to have it. And we have, again, we have this calendar. If you don't have this calendar, then, you know, you miss it out on something. You may have one of the other calendars, but as long as, and you're going to, and there should be some unity in our calendars. Now understand this also. Remember I said, there's a uniqueness of in each community. Now in the original, they're in the Ethiopian community, the Beta Israel community, they'll start Pesach, same time, Nisan one or, or, or you know, uh, Abib one, uh, 14, and we'll have the ceremony, you know, you have, and then when you get down to 
Next, the next Friday after that, which is the 22nd, they will start counting the Omer. But we don't do that, right? We start counting the Omer actually on the 16th. So Saturday, next Sabbath night, we'll start counting the Omer. That'll be the first count. And there is a calendar, there is a, a, a software for that. If you want to really get into that, it's a good thing to do. Because remember, there is something called muscle memory. What is muscle memory? You'll do it, you'll practice it, and then it becomes second nature. You may not even be thinking about it, but it happens. At this time, if you do this for enough times and practice it every year, when it comes to this season, you're gonna, your body, your mind is gonna remind you something is supposed to be happening at this time, right? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna, we're gonna, and again, when you have this calendar to help you out, it's to help us, to keep us unified. Remember I said, Elijah must come first and he's gonna unify. This helps us with the unification. I hope I'm not giving you too much. Okay, I wanna give this to you. All right, so we're gonna do the Passover, eat the, the meal. Again, there's flexibility, depending on what your community you're in. Then the next night, we're gonna start counting the Omer, the counting the, the weeks of seven till we get to the 50th day, which is the Pentecost, right? Now, there's something unique about this Passover. I don't want to get too deep into it because, again, a lot of you are not as observant as many of us have that have been. Brother Mike, we, we've been over 20 years in this thing. You know that? Wow. We've been a long time in this thing. You know, we didn't. So we're not just novices. You know, we can get really deep into it. So we don't want, but we don't want to, uh, again, uh, hinder people from seeing the simplicity of it and the importance of us doing this. Right, because it can be overwhelming at the beginning, but then you just become hungry for it and you want to do more as you know more as you do more. Yeah, and, and that's the beauty of it because we're growing, right? I learned, I learned something the other day. I was with one of the other rabbis who's been, uh, he's like a 10th generation rabbi. We, and, I, and it, you know, I was listening to him teaching. And I said, you know what? That's something different for us. But, but the thing about it is, he makes it simple like we do, right? And I right. said, that's, you know, anybody could take this because he makes it easy. And that's what we want to do. We want to make it easy and enjoyable, right? Uh, and, and because it is easy and enjoyable and it reminds us as a people who we are and who delivers us and that he uses those from amongst us to deliver us. Yeah. Now, earlier, a quote, Easter said that there was friendship and there is assignment. Moshe Rabino was on assignment. Mm -hmm. And he was delivering the people. Many of us are on assignment to teach people, to bring others into this Seder, mm -hmm. this Passover Seder. That is our assignment. Okay. And so we want to do that. And, and one of the easiest ways, again, is, is to have this calendar and just follow the calendar. Now, let me do this again. Now, watch this. Keep watching the screen. Now, can you see the Passover Seder? Yeah. That front. This is, this is a, 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 a help, a way of helping you to follow the Passover Seder, the order. Seder meaning the order, all right? The order of how we do this, starting again on Friday evening when we have the or if you do a, 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 a sabbath night uh seder it's good to have one if you don't have this one there are several others out there that you can use but this is a is a this one is a pdf copy and it comes down from uh again as it says the israelite board of rabbis so it's it's ours and again and it is unique to us so as, as you're looking at this, you see it talks about we're being slaves, right? And I know these rabbis, right, by the way. I'm just not, I'm not a part of theirs. I'm with West African Jews, but we under, all of us are under Rabbi Fune. And I like was, how you have the painting there. As you can see, there are color, yeah. people of melanin. Yeah. These are yeah. these are all in Egypt. And yeah. so what are they going to do? They're going to paint people like them. And we right. see the white. Griff and I have pointed out before. So they had white paint. So if, those, if they were Caucasian, they would have made white skin, but they made them in resemblance of them, yeah. okay? They took them off the ball the paint. Israelites right? and the Egyptians. 
yeah. black, black. Yeah. And, and so that's why it's important for us to have our own, right? For our the uniqueness of our community. It's very important. It's, it's very, but we can be who we are and we have our own uh, or, or customs that we do that signifies who we are and the struggle that we have gone through. Because I didn't, I, you know, I didn't go through the Holocaust and, and there are many other things I didn't go through, but transatlantic slave trade, I can identify with, right? Because mm -hmm. somebody in my family went through those things, right? And so you just follow these, uh, as we call it, this is the Israelite freedom Haggadah. And you just follow this. And then people wonder why we say transatlantic slave trade. Oh, that's in the past. It's not because what they've done to us is it, still affecting us. That has affected us. Slavery, ripping our children, breaking up our families, putting us in poverty, put all that has is still affecting us. Yeah. So yeah. don't tell us that's the past. It doesn't affect us. It does whooping us. That's a lot of times. That's why we whip our children. Yeah. We have got to stop. We have to do better because mm -hmm. now we know better. Yeah, uh, real quick, uh, Sister Easter, when we talk about how that still affects us, it's not only like, oh, you know, uh, we remember, it's also scientific. You look at epigenetics, it says that what's happened in your past gets encoded into your DNA. And so the fact that this stuff has happened has left a mark on our seed and on our eggs encoded into our DNA. And you still, uh, it still affects your genetics today. And you still feel the trauma from that stuff in today's world, which actually lines up with the Bible because he says, you do these things and I will curse you through, you know, if you don't do these things, I'll curse you through three generations. If you do them, I'll bless you through thousands of generations. And so science is just now catching up to see that's not just something that's said, this actually manifests itself in the physical realm. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, you know, people say that has no bearing. It's like, you have no idea what you're talking about in the physical, in the spiritual realm or in the biological realm because both show that it has a bearing today. Yeah. Amen. And that, and I read the last uh, couple times uh, back that we had an episode. African American children, by the time they're age of five, have experienced three traumas. They've experienced three traumas that can send them into a bipolar episode that can send them into a depression before they even reach the age of five. Three where they've been discriminated against, where they've been beaten, where they've come up in broken homes. So don't tell me this doesn't affect us. It does, and it continues, and we're going to break this generational curse. It's already happening. Yeah. It, it, you, it takes probably about four generations to actually get it out, yeah. but, but that's continual work, right? Continual work, and it's so important for us to, to take hold of this thing, and, and, and we're, all we're doing is telling the foundation of the deliverance is in you can be found in this passover now uh, in the dis in the discussion we're talking about uh, psychogenetics where the things that have happened to the forefathers is passed on to the children mm -hmm. you know what the people the gentiles let me just put it there with the gentiles knew this and the reason that they knew this is because when they raided our libraries in africa on the continent of africa in timbuktu and mali where we had our great libraries with millions of volumes of books, they discovered that we had science and physics and we had all these things that we're studying in high school and college now, they had there in Timbuktu. They raided and they destroyed many of those uh, books. But they learned, and we talked about psychology in those days. It was major university there in Timbuktu. And we know the story of Timbuktu. Timbuktu is still there, it just doesn't have all the books. A lot of the books were kept, kept in families, different families, which hid them that knowledge. But the West or the Gentiles were able, through the help of the Muslims and other tribes that are, you know, the warring tribes were able to confiscate. They found the, the, the wealth of knowledge. See, at that time, there was a time when knowledge was the commodity. Mm -hmm. Knowledge was the commodity. It was the gold. It was the wealth. It was knowledge. And that was in Mali, Timbuktu, around it and on the co continent of Africa. And they robbed that and they studied our books and again, weaponized Christianity, right? They weaponized the Bible against us and robbed us of being able to read and to communicate with each other. And we lost a lot of that. So we died 2000 years ago. We died 2000, actually we died 2000 years ago. 
right? And, and more importantly, we died again 400 years ago, we died. But now, after 2,000 years, we're being resurrected, and that information is there, but we have to overcome the trauma of what we've gone through, right? The trauma of it. Trauma, but, trauma. But weaponized trauma. trauma happens even when the baby's in the belly. Yes. And something happens to that mother and, and she can't, she got to get the bus and she's stressed and, and the, the daddy didn't left her and they didn't put them in jail because that is traumatizing yeah. even to the baby in the womb. Yeah. You know, that they're is studying, one of the They're talking about these things. They're studying them now. That's one of the reasons why we've talked about um, health and wealth and uh, Coach Elise and I, we've talked about um, Kashrut, how um, our forefathers, when they killed animals, they did it in a kosher way to minimize or to just do away with any kind of trauma. Because you have to think about when they're in these animal mills and you got these pigs and cows and chickens that's watching their brothers and others being slaughtered and beaten and everything, everything they're traumatized. So at the, right before their hormones. death, all mm -hmm. of these hormones and stuff are raising mm -hmm. through their body. And what happens? They die with these enraged hormones and then we ingest them in our food and then we wonder why a lot of our personalities and our uh we go off and stuff and things because we have this heightened we're that's elevated a, that's, <laughs> that's, right. so, that's so important because remember that when the slave masters when the master would come into a man's home and take his wife the oh. man had no power to defend her and if he did oftentimes they would sodomize him in front of their children oh. right oh. and watch this though now watch where i'm going with this right so when the man is out and he's been de, de, his manhood has been stripped from him and he is anger, that anger is built up upon him and he can't take it out on, on his enemy. So what does he do? When he goes home from the field, he's already emasculated. He goes home and he sees this woman who this other man has slept with and he takes it out on her. Uh. And the children are there. The young boys and the young girls are there. Her father, the father, the man of the house is beating the woman because he cannot go out and take it out on the other man that he really wants to. And many and then times, she was not carrying always. the slave master's baby. So now right. we got this biracial baby coming out and yeah. he has to raise, help raise this baby on top yeah. of it. All that is traumatizing. All that is there. And we see it played out over. And you hear him talk about when a, a young person was, was uh, molested as a child, so he molested somebody else. They know. The scientists, the psychologists, the psych they know that that trauma is in us. It's there. Someone in your family, someone in your bloodline had this happen, and it is transferred forward. And the scientists know this. And then what do we do? Go out and self-medicate, drinking, yeah. crack, yeah. cocaine, yeah. Any, uh, any drug that we can get to self-medicate because it's, it's, that's, all that stuff is in bed. So don't tell us it doesn't affect us. It has affected us. It has. So stop yeah. lying, United States. It has affected us. Yeah. And so that's why they're having a lot of programs now. That's why they're dealing with, with mental illness now. Yeah. It has affected people. Yeah. You, and, you know, when I grew up, when I was in high school in, in, uh, in Gary, Indiana, I want to say this, in Gary, Indiana, you know, there came a time when, for the time when I was ready to graduate, we, there were, we, there were gang fights, right? And the students would, every first week of every school year in the first week, somebody would get killed in one of the schools. Gangs, right? Rival faction gangs. Because again, they've lost their identity, heritage, culture, and, and have taught that life doesn't mean it. So they fight and, and they would start, this started, you know, like in the late 60s, early 70s when they were killing. And when a student get killed, we just go to class like, okay, you know, so-and-so got killed, you know, the gang fight and we go in class and nothing is said about it, right? You don't hear about it, you know, no. But today, because it's happening in other school systems, in other words, the white schools, now they have psychologists in there. So when there's a shooting, they get what? Treatment. They go in and they talk to them and they explain what, that never happened to us. Uh -huh. They didn't do that in our school. Right. What they did was put police in there and put chains in there, uh, or these gates that they would put down in the hall during when classes were in section, so you couldn't go and roam the hall. And we had police there on the ground, but there was no trauma management for the children. 
for the student. But today, because it's happened with these mass shootings in the in the white community, now they're doing it. Now we have to address it. Now it's a now problem. They, now so it's, it's, a been, problem. it's been a problem. So they've always known this, but they didn't. It was not a problem. But AIDS started hitting the AIDS yeah. started hitting the community. They said, "Oh, that was from Africa." Well, it wasn't a problem, but until Rock Hudson got it, then one Rock Hudson got it. A Caucasian man, oh, we got to get a name, we got to get a cure, we got to figure this out now. So so what are we saying? And why are we going into this? The reason we're going into this is because Passover is, 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 is for us. We have to choose how we're going to celebrate the Passover, remembering the things that we've been delivered from, mm -hmm. right? And the things that we've gone through and that we are being delivered through the power of our Father, right? He is delivering us but he has given us a pathway, but we have to accept that pathway and get into it and begin to do those things, right? Now, you know, we read about, but we have to actually begin to do these things. Just, uh, Yeshua said everything he began to do, what teach and to do. So we're teaching you Passover so that you can do the Passover because in doing the Passover, there's a spiritual concept that takes place. When you do them, there's something that happens spiritually inside of you, not just in your mental faculty, but in your spirit, the spirit of your mind begins to change. It begins to line up because the Torah is for the children of Israel. Uh -huh. First. And so when even when you look First. at that, that exodus, we see it right now. Any day it can happen with us. Look at the Ukrainians. Mm -hmm. One day they sitting there uh, eating pie and cake. The next minute they're getting bombed. It can happen to us at any time. So we have to get in our position. We have to know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. And, and it will, if you don't think that it'll work, give it a try. Start living it. You'll start to see changes. You will begin to see changes. You begin to get favor with those around you. You begin to see them. And you begin, again, in your spirit, the spirit of your mind, you will, things will begin to change. You can speak things, them into existence. Yeah, literally, will, literally, yeah. I speak some things into existence. Yeah. And you yeah. start getting visions and God makes you aware before things happen. The mm -hmm. horn goes off. Yeah, yeah. Minister so, Griff, yes. I know you were trying to get in and say something too. Okay. Um, yeah, I can't remember the exact comment I was going to make, but uh, one thing I did want to ask is, uh, Rabbi, that text that you have that has the, uh, lays out kind of the order of things, the one you just showed, where can we find that at? Um, we have that as a PDF. Okay. Yeah, okay. a, uh, I think, a, did I send it to, out? I can send you it out. You sent it out. I can resend it. I okay. can resend it. You yeah. sent okay. out the parish on in, in the calendar. And Minister Griff, you were trying to speak when we were talking about the drugs in the neighborhood, people self-medicating themselves. Well, I was going to say, um, two things I was going to say. Number one, you know, we think about all of this, um, what's happened to us. We didn't even mention, you know, institutionalized racism, you know what I'm saying? And how the effect that that's had traumatically on us as well. There's all this trauma in our DNA. And then there's a, a very uh, explicit as aspect of it that still happens today through uh, institutionalized racism, which we still see in our schools. I fight it every day in our schools. We see it in every single part of society. There's nowhere we can go in society and not experience. And certain folks will say, that's not true. You know, there's no such, I've had people look me in my face and tell me that's not true. There's not institutionalized racism. And it's oh. just wild that, you know, the two Americas we can live in. Um, and so I was gonna say that. And then the other thing I was gonna say is, um, even think we're talking about, you know, the way that they change, uh, the, the, the way that they change this based on whose community is affecting, even think about the words they use for the crack, the crack epidemic versus the opioid crisis, right? When it was us, it was the epidemic. And they, they use this kind of word for it to describe what was going on in our community. Um, it was like this dangerous thing that was happening. Uh, but when it came down to white folks and, and heroin and all this, it became a crisis. Oh. And in that case, in a crisis, you need aid. An epidemic, you need policing, you need, you know, uh, jail sentences. And so all throughout our society, listen to the language, and we just see it again and again and again. Yes, yes. We, we I mean, it's right in our face every day. Exquisite. It's, it's right in our face every day. Yeah. Who's going to change it for us? Who do you think is going to change it for us? Nobody. Nobody's going to change it. We have to change it. Gotta be us. It's Look at us. the insurrection, a, attack on democracy. 
Those people, what they got a slap on the wrist. If that was us, we'd be underneath the jail. Capital murder for that officer. Anybody they could get capital murder for that man dying. Nobody's serving anything for that man dying no time. No, Mom, if it was us, it wouldn't have been underneath jail. It would have been murder. We would have been mm-hmm. shot dead in the streets. <laughs> they wouldn't have let us run up on the Capitol like that. We right. wouldn't have made it to a jail. We'd have been shot dead in the streets. Yeah. Yeah. They would have had national guards out there with their you know, yep. tanks, with tanks, right? And, and, and dogs and, and tear gas and everything else. Yeah. So again, but that reminds us of where we are. What? Right? That reminds us. And again, we can't rely on the system, the social construct that we're born into, to we can't allow it to dictate us in our communities, in our homes. We are the catalyst for change. We are the catalyst for change. And we're not alone, right? You're never alone. We are a community and we are a worldwide community. And we're going to weaponize the Torah, just as the other, the Bible, we're going to weaponize, we're weaponizing the Torah. Because in weaponizing the Torah, we are weaponizing deliverance from the world system. We must let our, allow our eyes to be open and turn toward the, the law of our father obey his teachings. He gave us these teachings to deliver us out of the world's system because it is not designed for our good. The world system has never been never. designed for our good. Never. You must understand that. Just because they give you a little bit of a treat to keep you on their side, it doesn't mean they're for you. It means they're going to use you in some capacity to continue this, this thing that we're in, this bondage, this captivity that we're in. And as you study the Torah and you begin to look at what's going on around you, you will see the answers are there for us as a people, right? Again, we are in a season of unification or should I say reunification. We're in a season for the Anusim, and for those that have been lost in the world without hope and alienated from the Commonwealth of Israel, this is the beginning of the season for your return, your repentance, your teshuvah, however you want to see it. This begins, this marks the beginning of the season of your deliverance. You can come out of the world system. Okay. You still have, have to function in the world system, but understanding who you are while you're in this world system. You're not the system. We are above the system when we come to Torah, but we obey the laws of the land. Again, understanding who we are and whose we are while we're in this system. We're here to be a light to the world and we cannot be a light if we're hiding it under a basket or we are afraid to speak forward, okay? So, and the light And the light to the world is the truth. It, the truth will set you free. A light to the world is exposing things, exposing the devil, exposing, and, and that, that's the light. That's coming into the light. It's coming into the knowledge. Yes. So think about the experiences that you've had in your families. Think about where you want to be. It's, you know, the plagues are there, but the story is not the plagues. The story is the deliverance. Okay, the main focus of this Passover history is the deliverance, right? The plagues are there, Mm -hmm. but they're not the story. Deliverance, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Did anybody have any questions or anything? Um, Is there any other uh, thing you want to go into, Rabbi, before we close out? Uh, Just a reminder that, oh, was somebody going to say something? Yeah, I do have a question real quick. Uh, Brother Mike, the, the, the setter that he has behind him, when we go to lay these things out, is there a requirement? I don't want to say a requirement to be legalistic about it, but is there something, should I get a, a seder or is it also just as good to just kind of put this stuff on plates in an arrangement uh, and eat it that way? If you, you, you can just put it, the whole thing is not to have 
the plate label per se, but to have those items. Because okay. as you're going through your uh, Seder, there's going to be a part where you have to take part of the, the horseradish. There's going to be a part where you have to take part of the matzah. There's going to be a part where you take part of the maror or the parsley and you dip it into the salt water. The, uh, the thing is to have the items, not necessarily a labeled plate, but you can okay. place those items on a, any plate. Okay. Thank That's you, a good question. Thank right. you. Don't want, don't want to make it legalistic. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and the thing about it, when, when it comes to the Passover or any of God's appointed times, Moedim, not Jewish holidays, but God's appointed, Yahweh's appointed times, you don't have to do it. You get to do it. Yeah. Amen. 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 Uh, Sister Daniels, is there something you wanted to add? Not really. I was just <laughs> grateful for all of this. It was perfect. It's always perfect timing for me, you know, because I was just saying that I needed to find a way to make it um, more personal in our household. And, and, you know, because, you know, when you don't know, you just start off with what you have. And I, I told you guys, I just got the, the plate <laughs> and I've been doing Passover for a while, <laughs> you know, and saying the next Passover, I really, you know, get the, but, you know, one of the things that I was just, you know, having communication with y'all about this morning was, you know, making it more personal and more to our experience so that when I'm inviting people over, which mostly is my mom <laughs> for now, <laughs> you know, but with, um, or my parents, when my dad's able, but um, that it, it becomes a real life thing instead of the Seder that we were saying that kind of seems like it's somebody else's story. Um, I don't know if any of you have experienced it, but I've done it where it just feels like someone else's story and not mine. So that was what I was praying about. And then Rabbi just touched on all of those things, including giving us that um, um, Israelite Passover Haggadah, which we'll definitely be using. And then you touched on the, you know, doing it on the floor. And that was just that idea just came to me this morning also because I was doing it on the table before. And it's like, how about we just set this up on the floor? It's easier to recline than try to recline on the table. And so I'm just grateful. It's not much that I have to say. And I just wanted to point out how timely, you know, he, the most high always is with his information. He kind of sets you up before you're about to find something out. And so, a amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. I do it on the floor, too, because Rabbi, he taught last year about doing it on the floor, and I said, that's a really good idea. And yeah. it's fun. It, it's, it makes it fun and more personable doing it that yeah. way. And so, you... and um, that's what we're here for. And we mm -hmm. talked about the friendship and assignment. We're on assignment to deliver mm -hmm. this. I am still learning. I'm, I'm just a host here. I, I'm not all this and that, but I'm learning each and every day. Every time I come on here, what God gives me, what he's speaking. My life has changed. My life has changed for the best. I'm more peaceful. I, I go to the Lord. He delivers mm -hmm. things to me. My daddy, my Yahweh, he, mm -hmm. he, my life has changed. I don't have to uh, be rushing out for these pagan holidays, spending all my money for a, a day and don't even know what it's about. Enough mm -hmm. is enough. Yeah. Enough is enough. And then, you know, we're not patronizing even our people when you do spend money. At least if you're going to uh, do the pagan holiday, go to uh, uh, African-American and get the clothes. We're still, we, we, we're just lost. We're not building yeah. one each other up. Yeah. And that's what these feast days is about family. Because it has to begin with family. It has to begin with, with unity. It has to begin as a nation, coming together as a nation and teaching your children. Mm -hmm. It has to be for like Rabbi said, the four generations are already here. I can look right. at mine right now. Griff, Griff has a degree. I didn't mm -hmm. have a degree. He has a degree. Griff has gotten married before he mm -hmm. had children. I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a child out of well. I did. The, it has already changed for the good. It's already there. Now we have to Amen. walk in it. Right. Keep, Amen. Keep Amen. It going. Yes. Keep it going. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And by you the know, way, like, totally. when, like when uh, Rabbi was t talking about and you had even reiterated about um, getting on the floor and getting pillows and stuff. If you look at a lot of your um, biblical time movies and stuff where it have like kings and stuff like that, especially mm -hmm. in One Night with the King and even in, right, uh, right. in um, The Passion of the Christ when they was taking them to, to Herod's community and everything, you see them reclining and leaning on these pillows and stuff like that. Because on Passover, you now have become royalty. Right. 
Mm -hmm. So you get to enjoy the luxury of reclining and relaxing while you're eating and stuff like that. That's one of the significance of, of, of doing it. When you're eating your oh, ham, man. the prime, yeah. not any chitlins or, or the pork that's killing us with parasites and worms. We eating the prime, baby. Because that's who we are. Mm -hmm. We kings and queens. And, and remember this, though. The, in the movies <laughs> that we see, a lot of the, in the movies we see where they sit at this big table and they got all this garbage and all this on the table, that's uh -huh. not real. They were on the floor, okay? They, yeah. and, and the Lord, something that you see that painting of, uh -huh. it was on the floor. They were on the floor. Right. They were right. like, reclining on the floor, on the left, with eating with the right hand. I have to give you some teaching on that, yeah. why they eat with the right hand, not the left hand. Yeah, but, definitely. <laughs> but, 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 you know, it's, it, it's reclining. Mm -hmm. Again, it's, uh, as Minister Mike said, it's, royal, it's, it's showing royalty. We're eating mm -hmm. good, you know? We're eating, mm -hmm. like, you know? So it's returning and remembering Mm -hmm. you know, let me let me say this also i had a doctor one of my doctors dr galloway robert galloway here in houston texas he had an, an african museum downstairs at his building mm -hmm. and we would talk sometimes he said yeah well, he traveled to africa back and forth a, a lot so he said yeah you know in africa we and, and we sit uh, we sit around the family and everybody's touching during the meal the food is in the middle of, of the floor and they're just sitting and they're touching. It's about touching. It's about family, you know. Mm -hmm. but, but today, we a lot of time we live in the same house. We don't even touch each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no touching. Yeah. Family yeah. And, and, and relationship is about touching. When you travel in the Middle East and you travel in the Asian countries, when we greet, a greet and with a hug, it's a kiss on the cheek. One, two, three, depending on which community, you know, and the men kiss each other on the, on the cheek. That's why they talk mm -hmm. about greet each other with a what? A holy, holy kiss, holy kiss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah you see and, and actually my brother-in-law did that to me he caught me by surprise he did it to me and I, it kind of stunned me i said because i didn't think about it right yeah. right That's the way we greet right and, and mm -hmm. he, he, he shocked me with that it was a blessing i said you know the only time i see that is when i'm in the in the in the middle east but now yeah. it was good to yeah. see it in family so mm -hmm. yeah our customs are different mm -hmm. than we've grown up into and we need to return to many of the things that we did that we should return to. Again, mm -hmm. this is a season when we can begin to do those things, right? It reminds us of who we are and whose we are. Let this be a reminder. Let this season be a reminder. If you haven't done it, get a hold to that, that um, uh, Passover Seder that we have and just follow it. Mm -hmm. You'll see the, the plate that Minister Mike showed you. It's in there. A picture of it is in there. It tells you what's on the plate. It mm -hmm. it walks you right through. You don't have to do it word for word. You adapt it to where you are in this walk. Adapt mm -hmm. it for yourself because it can be overwhelming if you're trying to do it yourself for the first time. Just take parts of it. Do them. Do it. You know, do it. And, and tell the story the way you want to, right? Yeah, that was a, was a long, long night. <laughs> When uh, 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 Lakeisha had said, had mentioned about you know going, attending seders and not really feeling a part of, I think one of the greatest part uh, or challenges about attending a seder, if you have not actually placed yourself in the book, mm -hmm. right? If you see this as them, and you mm -hmm. don't see the Bible as us that's going to be the greatest challenge. But yeah. once you get over that hurdle and you're like, you know what? This book, this Bible, this Torah is all about us. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's all about us. And if you need like a little, you no, know, one of the things I think we had talked about last week was that Reclaiming the Throne, that documentary that's on the Tubi, that would be mm -hmm. a great way to kind of like segue to kind of help introduce like maybe over this next, next week. Mm -hmm. yeah. right right I, I did watch it i'm still i haven't finished the third part because it's three mm -hmm. parts the, but i did watch it reminded me of part, it actually i like the way they went into the detail mm -hmm. and they talk about how the church came in and changed the original colors mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah that's the third part Yes. So that's the part I haven't I haven't mm -hmm. finished seeing yet. Yeah. Yes. And I, I told my mom I would send it to her for her to check it out also because she I was like with her, she's that type. If she watched the video and now she'll be doing research. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Because yeah. the cult, uh, cult Easter, she she said it and, and Minister Griff has you know, mentioned it before, how mm -hmm. they had the color white. Because right. those, those claws, you know. And even in, in the book, they show where there's all these different um Hebrews. 
and Egyptian slave where they had locks and braids and dreads. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They had yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. right, including Samson, I believe. Right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, like yeah. when you see yeah. Mm -hmm. You see the Rastafarians, and at first people would think they're crazy. I know in the Caribbean, definitely when they right. become Christians, right. they be telling people they need to cut off their locks and things like right. that. Right. Only to find out when I started reading the book, I was like, but doesn't this seem like the vow of the Nazarite? They right. just over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 you know, but because we don't yeah. know and we yeah. adopt right. this Greek right. and Western right. mindset, yeah. we go and we, you know, yeah. tell and people the they're wrong right. that aren't. <laughs> and the Western mindset doesn't understand us. So, so yeah. since they don't understand it, is bad in their mm -hmm. eyes, right? Yeah. But what they don't understand is what they're studying in the Bible is us. But, right. Uh, you know, right. and so when we right. start to live that, when you see the rest of fire and how they eat and how they carry themselves mm -hmm. and different things, you know, um, and they'll tell you who they are. Mm -hmm. you know, I had friends that said, we're African. You know, when we were, when I worked at Exxon and I met many people from the, the Caribbean, uh, Caribbean mm -hmm. uh, you know, and played, they said, we're African. We, we, you know, we're African. We're from mm -hmm. Africa. They knew who they were. They knew they were from Africa. And yeah. they knew they were Israelite. Yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Think. Let me tell you this joke. Uh, mm -hmm. I first started my growing my my, my, my hair dregs. Mm -hmm. And this brother uh, went to get some gas. I, I got out the car and the brother said, Rostaman. <laughs> <laughs> I said, look. When I got back to the home, got back home, I asked my wife, I said, this boy called me Rostamus. She said, I hit him. She said, no, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he was that's, that's, a good, that's a good call, you know. That's a good, yeah. <laughs> and I had to look it up to see what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the yeah, thing. So, you know, I used to see people with, with the, you know, with the dreads years ago, you know. And it never, I it never, I never thought about it, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a thread. And, and then, and then recently, I started, you know, getting into it. But it didn't, I just, it didn't affect me in, mm -hmm. in any way to understand that many of those those brothers that that are that wear dreads, they're actually from the priesthood. Do you know that? Yeah, I didn't know and that. I, and I notice a lot of them are doing the beards now. Mm -hmm. A lot of Most young of men have were. their beards growing mm -hmm. out, which I'm very yeah. proud of them. They, they're yes, their yes, now. yes. It's becoming and they're, and they're making mm -hmm. the oils. I see them all the time selling the oil. So they're yeah. building businesses off yeah. that and advertising their beard and beard oil. Mm -hmm. Matter of mm -hmm. fact, I bought some of the oils at the uh, Galleria Mall. It was a place out of Atlanta that's making these oils uh, for us Hebrew Israelites. So you can put it on your hand or your body, but it, it originated from the beard. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Good to know because my husband's growing a beer. <laughs> and then this, this, this top that I got on, like I say, we had to patronize our own people. I ordered uh, at a boutique from this uh, African American lady and I ordered a like one for a boutique. So we, we can research these things. Even Amazon has an African American section where you can yeah. buy from, from your people. So yeah. come on now. We, yeah. we have got yeah. to do better. Okay. Yeah. And there's a we buy black too. And you could not only get stuff from um local black people, but you can get stuff from like outside. So like, you know, like the best Shea butters come from like Senegal mm -hmm. and all those places mm -hmm. and you can get it from yeah. there too. Yeah. Cause and, I just so ordered what a lot of the, a lot of the people mm -hmm. are realizing now, like uh, SC in different places saying, okay, they are starting to buy their own people merchandise. So what we'll do is we'll give it to you. We'll go mm -hmm. ahead and do your online business. And you just get a little percentage because they don't want to miss any of that money. Right. Yeah, so that's what that's they're right. doing now. Here, we'll give you a back store. Mm -hmm. And so you, right. can go, you can go ahead and have your friends and them come on there and we'll we'll make fifteen dollars and we'll give you two. Yeah. So they're, right. they're doing that, that stuff now, too. Yeah. Right. And that's a rip off. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Make you an yeah. affiliate and make you an affiliate. So they, they you, keep do you your under. own line, have your own things going on. Minister Mike, take care. Uh, All right. Double so, toe. Yeah, bro. Welcome to Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead um, and have Apostle uh, Dr. Benjamin Moore do our closing prayer for us, please. This, this has been a, a great teaching uh, today. Yeah. So my prayer, yeah, I'm taking the lyrics from a song. Hashi na 
Father, open our eyes that we may see to follow thee. Lord, grant us thy living peace that, and let us our dissension cease. Let our faith increase each day. Yeah. And, and, and Father, just open our eyes so that we can see both spiritually and naturally so that we can walk and, and live in Yeshua and being in the world and not of the world. We thank you for that word from Rabbi, muscular memory, so that we can remember these these feast festivals and the Passover, yeah. which leads to Pentecost. And let it be in our heart to celebrate these things the way that we should. And, and like it's been said, let, let us recognize us in these festivals and that we can do a better job in training our children in the name of Yeshua. I pray peace and blessings to everyone. Amen. 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 Yashua, amen. We thank you all for logging on. We thank you, Rabbi Afshalom, for your wonderful teachings. We thank all the ministers, uh, amen. the sisters and the brothers that's on the panel. We thank you for tuning in. We love you. We honor our assignment. We're here every Saturday to teach you. You can go on YouTube and look up the past other 90 uh, episodes that we put out there move forward if you want something different you have to do something different the yes change is now. Amen. it's time it's time and i guarantee you there's gonna be a difference in your life i guarantee you you are always going to show up he's going to have an intimate personal relationship with you and you'll know it because he's a show up and a show out god he will show out in your life and don't wait and say, well, I'll wait till I get better. I'll wait till I get away from the Christian church. No, do it now. Start celebrating it now. And he will speak to your spirit. I promise you. Amen. We'll see you next Saturday. Uh, have a happy Passover. It starts on the 15th. And we look forward to seeing you again next Saturday. We love you. Shalom. Love you all. Shalom. 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 Thank you.